You'd be hard-pressed to find a game more synonymous with disappointment than No Man's Sky. This was supposed to be the space sim to end all space sims. Endless procedurally generated planets and wildlife, huge fleets and space battles, multiple professions and ways to play the game, a ton of NPCs to form relationships with, a vast, living, breathing universe where anything goes. And what did this revolutionary game-changer turn out as? A bargain basement dime a dozen survival crafting game that you've seen and scrolled past a thousand times on Steam. Damn near every feature that lead designer Sean Murray promised in interviews didn't make it into the initial game. Almost every snippet of promotional footage was forged. It got so bad the game was investigated for false advertising, and Steam lifted its refund policy so anybody suckered in by the blatant lies of the marketing could return the game anytime they wanted. The game's obsessive fan base, who sunk their entire identities into No Man's Sky's success, dug deep and waged flame wars across the internet, desperately trying to convince themselves and everyone else that they they hadn't been duped, but eventually the dust settled, denial wore off, and No Man's Sky went down as one of the biggest failures in gaming. The game with infinite content and only 2.5% of the Steam version's owners are still playing. Batman Arkham City brings in more players per week, and it's a six-year-old game everyone's beaten at least thrice over by now. The magical thing about being a critic in modern times is that games are constantly being updated and patched, so let's see how the game fares as of March 2018. And don't worry, I wasn't dumb enough to pay money for this. I found it among the... TERRORS OF THE LIBRARY! My first impression of this game could not have gone much worse. I started playing the game after the day one patch had installed, but before a full eight hours of updates had finished. My first attempt to start the game spawned me inside of a planet where I drowned instantly because this game was a broken, constantly crashing mess at launch. My second attempt to start a save file spawned me on an ice planet. I did all the tutorial shit, put the game down to focus on the AIDS emoji video, and when I came back to the game... I had somehow teleported to a sand planet. I finished the tutorials and spent a few hours grinding resources to start my journey, only to find my save file was glitched and unplayable. See, to leave the starting area you need a hyperdrive, and the only hyperdrive in the game had spawned back on the ice planet where I'd started, which was now 50,000 light years away. I blew hours of work on an unplayable save file. It also did not escape my notice that the game's menu icon was a serene bright blue at launch and is a deep pissed off red now. Passive aggressive much, Hello Games? Anyway, you spawn on a randomly selected planet next to a crashed ship with no memories of who you are or how you got there. Your first task is to repair your ship. You're equipped with a gun called a multi-tool that converts anything you shoot into resources that are collected automatically. Shoot trees, get carbon, shoot rocks, get iron, and other materials like zinc, platinum, and aluminum you collect from different plants that spawn at random. No Man's Sky fancies itself as a survival game. Your gun constantly runs out of ammo and you constantly need to farm carbon to reload it. Almost every planet has a hostile atmosphere and you you need to constantly look for zinc to recharge your hazard shield, plus less common isotopes to recharge your life support system. You also need a constant supply of iron to power your ship's main engines, and unless you feel like spending hours walking over empty terrain to get everywhere, you constantly need to pick up plutonium to power your ship's liftoff engines. Thing is, though, for ostensibly being a survival game, it's pretty piss easy to survive. Every material that you need for basic gameplay spawns everywhere that you turn. You trip over iron, carbon, and the constantly respawning plutonium every few feet. If a shield or your life support gets low, you can instantly summon your ship to your location and just chill in the cockpit until everything recharges. You'll never run low on any of the materials needed to power your equipment, but you'll still have to constantly stop and farm five or so different materials everywhere you go anyway. So the supposed survival mechanics that make up the central gameplay are just endless, tedious, pointless, busy work. Once you repair your ship, your character realizes that some kind of otherworldly presence is compelling them to travel to the center of the galaxy. From there, the game becomes completely open-ended. You can travel to the center to find out what's there, or you can just dick around and explore other systems and planets. And here's where my absolute biggest problem with the game comes in. Basic navigation is an ungodly pain in the ass. The galaxy is split into smaller maps called systems, each of which has two to six planets and a space station. Every single time you want to travel to a new system, you have to 
spend one warp core. To build one warp cell, it takes 50 carbon, 50 zinc, 100 iridium, 100 plutonium, and 100 thamium-9. Now everything on that list is easy to find and stockpile, except for thamium-9. You can only find that by harvesting mushrooms that you find every now and then, or by shooting asteroids, 80% of which give you iron instead. But you farm all of these materials, you build a warp core, you warp to a new system, and then you do that 7,000 more times to win! I am not kidding! Your hyperdrive has a range of 100 light years at the start of the game. The galactic center is over 700,000 light years away. It takes thousands of warp cores to get to the end of the game, and individual warp cores to get anywhere else you want to explore, which all translates into dozens and dozens of hours of nothing except picking up rocks. I'm not deliberately oversimplifying the game, that really is all there is to it. You land on a planet, you pick up the rocks you need to make a warp core, warp to the next system, and repeat hundreds to thousands of times. That is literally all you do for hours on end in this shittin' game. There is almost zero combat to break up the rock collecting. You often come across animals, but almost all of them are docile and completely ignore you, and even the game's enemies, the sentinels, completely ignore you unless provoked on most planets. And even when a sentinel attacks you, all that happens is this little orb enemy floats in place shooting you, you return fire for a few seconds, and it dies. I've never encountered more than two at once, and this one drone is the only enemy I ever ran into, with one exception. There isn't even a notoriety system where the sentinels escalate the more you fight them. Once you kill all one or two drones in the immediate area, they completely forget that you exist. So even when combat happens, it's just shooting one stationary target for a few seconds before you go about your day. Every Every planet's map is built entirely out of wide empty fields. There are no interesting environments or threats, no puzzles, no action, no suspense or stakes, no urgency to whatever you're doing. You walk around empty wastelands picking up rocks to make warp fuel, and that's the entire damn game. The other thing that No Man's Sky bills itself as is an exploration game. Every system and planet in the game is procedurally generated, so in theory you'll never come across any two planets that are completely identical. Each has unique generated landscapes and animals, and you get in-game currency for cataloging each planet, plant, and animal that you find. There are no invisible walls anywhere. Every section of a world is accessible, and you can even look up in the sky, see a planet in orbit, and then fly to that planet and fully explore it for yourself. You can even name the planets and the animals. The first world I spawned onto was a desert world with a lot of bizarre overgrown vine-like vegetation that I named Brio after, um... Nah, screw it, I want to see how many people get the reference. My starting system also had a beautiful beach planet that I named Aquas after the water level in Star Fox, and a poison world that I named Coughing. The next system had another beach world and a rocky desert world that I named Achto and Jeddah, respectively. And I'll be honest, for a while the exploration, the immense sense of freedom, and the discovery were fun and exciting. I especially loved whenever I ran into animals that often had children nearby and were just so cute and endearing, they evoked a real sense of wonder for me. But it only takes a few hours for that immersion and wonder to evaporate away as you realize just how empty the game is and just what a major waste of time the exploration turns out to be. Every single planet is functionally identical. I figured this out in the third system I visited, which comprised of three desert worlds I couldn't differentiate with a gun to my head. Every planet has a valuable mineral that you sell for cash, whether it's gold, copper, iridium, nickel, or emerald, they all do the same damn thing. Almost every planet has an atmosphere that drains your hazard shield, either due to radiation, toxins, or extreme temperatures, they all do the same thing. Each planet has the same two or three landmarks copied and pasted thousands of times. The only points of interest that ever spawn on planets are abandoned outposts and alien monoliths. Abandoned outposts are almost always empty, the best you find inside is a piddly amount of money, and alien monoliths teach you a few words of an alien language, which has zero impact on the game. They all do the same thing which is next to nothing. Once in a blue moon, you'll find a crashed ship that you can salvage or an abandoned building will give you a blueprint, but by and large, every landmark that spawns doesn't do shit, which demoralizes you looking for the ones that do do shit. Plus, why do all of the alien monoliths look identical to one another despite belonging to three separate alien races, one of which is machine? I quit exploring planets because I never found anything worth the hassle of searching the empty landscapes, and every world is identical apart from the ground texture.
And the thing is, I love exploration games. Metroid remains my favorite video game franchise despite Nintendo's concerted efforts to kill it a few years ago, and I tried Castlevania Aria of Sorrow and it blew my mind. So why is exploration in those games engrossing and enthralling, but here I'm skipping every planet that I don't absolutely have to visit? For one, Metroid and Castlevania actually reward exploration. You have to explore diligently for critical weapons, new tools, and the way that leads further into the game, but even past finishing the game, you want to check every nook and cranny because you know that you'll find new weapons and upgrades. You don't find shit in No Man's Sky beyond cloned, abandoned buildings and monoliths that didn't do anything the first dozen times you found them. There's no point to exploration without discovery. I never saw the episode of original Star Trek where they went to a planet, found nothing, fuck all happened and they left, and then the exact same thing happened the next 20 planets they went to. Second, Castlevania and Metroid are actual games. They're platforming action games. You're battling monsters and traversing tricky terrain, not to mention actual plots to resolve and goals to achieve. No Man's Sky just dumps you into an empty field, shrugs, and drunkenly mumbles, I don't know, explore some shit. Like most survival games, it forces you to go around collecting resources because they couldn't think of any other mechanics to the gameplay. If you weren't picking up rocks, the game would be a screensaver. But third, the environments themselves in Metroid and Castlevania are interesting. Metroid has you explore long dead civilizations or ravaged space stations pondering the tragedy and horror that came before you, while Castlevania immerses you into gothic horror magic and mystery, half dreading what's around each corner. Not only is every world in No Man's Sky a planet-sized vacant lot because of the procedural generation, but the entire damn galaxy just feels dead! Every freaking environment is just an empty field! None of these worlds have any history or culture to explore. No hint of life beyond the mindless animals that wander through walls. There is no singular trace that any civilization at any point existed anywhere in the whole damn universe. You never find any city, settlement, camp, or village anywhere ever on any planet. Nothing ever lived here. Even the abandoned buildings just have copy-pasted lines that don't mean anything, like referencing deadly spores that never pop up again and have no relevance. The game does have three intelligent species inhabiting the galaxy. The Korvax are robot Vulcans, the Gek are generic merchants, and the Viking are Klingon stand-ins that are always engaged in some vague war you've never seen or hear anything about. But the only times you ever see any of these aliens is sitting on ass in identical space stations repeated copy-pasted lines that don't mean jack. The Korvax wants data, the Gek wants food, the Viking is nervous about battle. There are no characters, just a few completely interchangeable brainless NPCs that don't have any history or meaning. Words cannot express just how empty the game feels. This universe is so shallow that it literally has three lines of lore across the entire game. The Gek once enslaved the Korvax, the Viking are trying to wage war on the Sentinels, and the Sentinels were designed to subdue life but grew self-aware or some shit. That is the sum total of backstory and history this entire universe has. Just if there isn't a single passably living thing in the entire game, nor any trace that one ever existed, what could there possibly be to discover? What is there to care about in this universe to warrant spending any time here? What point is there to exploration when it's crystal clear that I'm the only living thing in all of creation? I'll tell you, there is none. Having realized that the base game is nigh non-existent, I set out to try and find as many side quests as I could. I just figured there had to be an actual video game in here somewhere. First, I wanted to try the space combat. Every now and then, space pirates will ambush you when you're between worlds, and your starting vessel can't turn for shit. Every enemy ship flies literal circles around you. So I spent a few hours mining gold and doing some side missions, and I bought a nimble shuttlecraft that I dubbed the Wave Rider. So I sought out some more pirates, and boy howdy was I thrilled to find out that the space combat sucks balls too! For starters, you can recharge your shields with two button presses since the shields are powered with iron, and iron is literally the one thing that you trip over every few seconds everywhere you go. I went into every single space battle with infinite health, and thus robbed of any tension or need for strategy, the space combat is a gigantic, tedious chore. 
The controls are sluggish regardless of your ship, so it takes forever to line up shots or turn your ass around. The AI doesn't seem to do a damn thing except fly straight at you and fire their basic weapon. They don't even vary their speed, so they have to constantly loop around to take slow ass passes at you. Between the sluggish controls and the single minded AI, there's no way to fight more than one enemy at once. Every fight, I just slowly chased down the enemies one at a time. The rest of the group was constantly on my tail, beating me to shit. I healed constantly since I had more iron than Tony Stark's wardrobe at all times, and eventually the group died with me still at full health and not having taken a scratch. I never even found any enemies with special weapons or uber powerful ships. It's just the same one fight against guys with basic ships and basic guns again and again and again. But on top of the space combat being tedious and boring as shit, it's it's also rare and completely pointless. Pirates don't really spawn that often, they don't chase you into stations or atmosphere so it's easy to escape, and you don't get jack for actually fighting pirates except for some hull metal that does nothing and is barely worth any money. So space combat in its entirety is a complete waste of your time. Oftentimes you'll see fleets of ships flying through systems, and I thought maybe there would be some kind of ship combat side missions where you enlist in the navy or act as a bounty hunter. No! Oh, right, I completely forgot what game I was playing. Of course, the fleets do absolutely nothing. Each fleet has a freighter that you can buy for a few hundred million units, and... That's it. That's the one solitary thing that the fleets do besides just float there. I think you're supposed to be able to attack fleets to plunder their resources, but the one time I attacked a cargo vessel, nothing happened except I lost standing with a species, got nothing, and a pissed off security ship started chasing me. As far as I've noticed, they don't carry anything super valuable anyway to where it'd be worth attacking. Very rarely you'll find a freighter being attacked by pirates for another boring ass space battle, but the only thing that happens if you intervene is the freighter captain gives you a free warp core and offers you a discount to buy the ship. Honest to God, God, that's all the fleets do. So what happens when you own a freighter since it takes probably months solid worth of grinding to save up the money to buy one? Nothing! It lets you hold more ships even though there's literally no reason to own more than one, and it gives you more inventory space. That's it as far as I can tell. Freighters are literally just a trophy to show off how much of your precious time on earth you've wasted on grinding money in a game with nothing else to do. Every space station has a guy who will give you side missions for trader, merchant, and mercenary guilds. Guilds we never learn anything about and seem to have no influence over anything in the galaxy, naturally, and every single mission that I've seen has recycled exactly six objectives. You either kill sentinels, kill wildlife, scan animals and plants, shoot down a criminal ship, farm one material and take it to a trade outpost, or travel to one specific structure on one specific planet that's almost always out of the system, forcing you to waste warp cores. Not only do these missions quickly become repetitive since every one pulls from six dirt simple objectives, but doing them does nothing except get you money, which does nothing but let you buy a better ship, which I didn't urgently need once I had the Wave Rider. So unless you're hard up for cash, these missions get boring fast and are completely pointless. I also kind of stumbled across a side quest where you can visit Atlas stations, these giant robotic monolith things, but I honestly have no idea what these things do. I found one and all it did was babble some gibberish at me and point me to the next Atlas. If there's a reward for following the Atlases, the game doesn't communicate it, so um... Yeah, I'm gonna skip that too. Some of the abandoned buildings that spawn on planets can arbitrarily be built into a base. You can claim the building as your headquarters and turn it into a sprawling complex with tunnels, garages, storage rooms, all that shit. Near as I can tell, the only practical use to building a base is the ability to build biodomes and grow crops that you can sell for money. I tried to try farming, but you can't build a biodome without glass, and the game wouldn't let me craft glass until I found some cave marrow, and despite searching well over a dozen caves like the game instructs you to, I never found any shit in cave marrow! I found marrow bulbs that are explicitly called cave marrow in the item description, but oh, that doesn't count. I couldn't make any more progress on my base because my staff just kept nagging me for cave marrow, so that's it! So much for base building! Oh, and the game actually has a special difficulty setting called Creative Mode, where it gives you infinite resources specifically to let you go nuts with the base building. You know, just in case you're so tired of playing No Man's Sky that you'd rather play half-assed Minecraft instead. And that was it! That was all of the side content that I could find in the entire game. 
two boring ways to make money, a meaningless trophy to try and extend the game, and a second shitty combat system with zero rewards that almost never pops up. And not only is that a pathetic amount of side content that adds next to nothing to the game, but most of it was patched in several months after the game's launch. No Man's Sky was barely a game when it came out, and there's so little to do that it still feels like an early access title a year and a half later. I also really need to vent off about the game's blueprint system. Once in the blue moon you'll stumble across an empty building or side quest that gives you a blueprint, plus every space station has blueprints for sale. Once you find a blueprint, it gives you the ability to craft a new item, material, or tech upgrade to power up your ship or equipment. But almost every blueprint that I found was completely useless because the overwhelming vast majority of them are exclusively for the combat. I kept seeing shield boosts, recoil and cooldown reductions, damage increases, upgrades for side weapons that I didn't have, all shit that I had zero use for since I already curb stump every sentinel that I see and my ship has infinite health. Why put so damn many upgrades in the game for a system so irrelevant? The only time in the entire game I came close to dying was when I found an item called a gravity ball and picking it up spawned three sentinel drones and a crab walker thing to attack me. So the only time actual enemies spawn is if you travel to a high security planet and find a super rare glowy thing which is 100% avoidable and strictly optional. But get this, several hours of useless grind into this game, I stumbled across the blueprint for a warp reactor, which boosts the range of your hyperdrive and cuts down on the fuel grind. So you just have to waste hours looking for worthless blueprints on the off chance that you eventually find one you need. Whatever, let's just build this reactor. I can't wait to... Fungal mold? Where the hell do I find mold, and how in the royal hell does smearing mold on my hyperdrive double its efficiency? The game's interface is a royal pain in the ass too. You have to click and hold the button every time you want to select an option or input. Your ship, suit, and gun all have their own separate inventory, so you're never sure where you can install upgrades once you find them. And my third ship, the Cloud Jumper, had its tech menu hidden behind the inventory so I couldn't select the tech inventory without rotating my ship one ludicrously specific way. I also put off trading in the Wave Rider multiple times, because when you buy a new ship, all of its engines are empty and you can't transfer fuel from the old ship. So every time you buy a new vessel, you have to waste time grinding fuel from scratch before it can do anything. I eventually discovered that you can just buy the materials to build warp cores from space stations, all except for Thamium-9, literally the one thing I always desperately needed. The few times that it actually showed up in a store, it was in some piddly little amount that did me no good. Some planets have hostile sentinels that attack you on sight, and on these worlds, a sentinel spawns to interrupt what you're doing every a few minutes. You have to constantly drop what you're doing to ward off sentinels, and you have to constantly stop what you're doing to farm carbon because you'll burn through your ammo on a constant basis. The killer is the high security plants seem to be chosen at random, so there's no benefit to sticking around a high security world. Whatever you're looking for can be found much more easily somewhere else. Sometimes the planet creator just rolls a total botch and you'll find a world with almost no resources or no way to farm carbon, and if this happens to the world the game starts you on, well, you might as well reset. The game now has four different classes of ships, including fighters specialized for all that combat that never happens, but the classes feel and control so similarly, you still won't notice any difference between ships except for inventory space. And the animals are all randomly generated, but the pool of parts that the game draws from is so shallow and so monotonous that every planet's species quickly start to look the same. Sorry, that just looked like a good enough break in the script to bitch about the smaller but still big problems that nag you constantly. 
Hello Games' biggest Hail Mary to try and give the game some real content was the addition of Atlas Rises, a story campaign that the devs claim is about 30 hours long. I commend Hello Games for making an honest effort to fix the game, but I'm going to describe the first hour of the story mode and just see if you can suss out the major problem with it. You get a transmission from a guy named Artemis. You go to Artemis' wrecked ship, then you go to a nearby planet to use a communicator, then you fly to one specific point on each of three planets to plant signal boosters, then you go back to the communicator, then you have to learn four new alien words which requires flying to at least two monoliths. Then you have to travel to one specific location to talk to one specific alien to get a star map, only the Papa's ass won't talk to you, and you have to increase your standing with the species, and the easiest way to do that is fly to another four more monoliths. Then you backtrack to the same alien that ignored you earlier. And time! It took me an hour to do all that because every objective is spread as far as possible. And what have I done in that one hour? I've walked slash flown to about a dozen different waypoints, and that's it. I played the main story for another few hours past the point where I stopped writing down everything you do, and apart from one brief fight with Sentinels, it was absolutely nothing but walking from place to place. There is a story, but it unfolds at such an ungodly pace due both to padding and the trudging slow basic navigation, and it's only barely interesting. Your character is a member of a fourth species called Travelers, who got depressed they couldn't explore all the game's planets. The Sentinels have teleporters, there's some wittering on about how exploration is the true meaning of life or some crap. Honest to God, several hours into the story, that was all the plot that had unfolded. There's just no getting around the fact that the base game has basically no gameplay and no lore or world building, so the story mode had nothing to work with to craft something worthwhile. I played this game in my spare time for weeks, and I never even got close to the galaxy's center. I was still 670,000 light years away by the time I quit. The only help you get towards cutting down the grind is every now and then by pure luck you'll find an anomaly, and I went over a dozen systems in a row without finding one at times. Inside the anomaly is some Jehovah's Witness priest or whatever who points you to a black hole, and if you go through the black hole it shoots you across the galaxy. The weird thing is, each black hole sends you one million light years per jump or something like that, but the distance to center count only goes down by a few thousand, or at least it did every time I used a black hole. 6,000 light years of progress is the best I ever got out of a black hole. It's better than just using the hyperdrive, but not by much. It's still gonna take weeks solid of farming thousands of warp cores worth of rocks before I finally reach the ending. Also, I really hope those Atlas stations weren't important, because now they're clear on the other side of the galaxy and I'm fu Whatever, I'm sick to death of this game, I quit. I'm just going to look up the ending online. I've gotta know, right? They tease some great existential mystery at the galaxy center, I've got to know what happens when you beat the game. So what is the big secret at the center of No Man's Sky? Shitting nothing! The game fades out, it kicks you back to the start of the game, only in a new yet identical galaxy where all your discoveries have been wiped, you're told to go to the center again, and the game starts over. People have gotten to the center dozens of times, the same thing happens each time. There is no ending, it just repeats infinitely. All that work to get to the game's end, and you get nothing. Just off the top of my head, some endings that would have been better, Rip off Star Trek V, and at the center of the galaxy is an ancient godlike alien trying to trick people into freeing him. Maybe at the center there's a master control monolith that kicks all the sentinels into ape shit murder mode, and then there's a galaxy wide war that shakes up the game or sets up a new story. Sean Murray walking on screen, flipping you off and saying, Thanks for your money, bitch, would have been less insulting. At least Captain America coming out after Spider Man Homecoming's credits and telling you to your face you wasted your time. At least that was funny! The funny part is, Hello Games eventually came up with an excuse for why the game has no ending, and they somehow made the whole thing even worse. 
In a desperate attempt to drum up hype for the story mode update, Hello Games produced a viral marketing campaign called Waking Titan. It's a series of hidden websites, phone numbers, and radio frequencies with puzzles for the game's fans to play in. As a part of Waking Titan, it was established as official No Man's Sky lore that the game's universe is a computer simulation. Every single thing in the game world does not exist. You are not, in fact, some bold adventure exploring the vast cosmos of space seeking life discovery and the meaning of existence. You're some dope trapped in the Matrix with no way out. That's why there's no ending, that's why there's no trace of civilization, that's why the whole universe feels dead. It was made that way on purpose, they decided to claim several months after the fact to cover their asses. It's not a lifeless shell of a game because Hello Games are rank amateurs with zero talent for game design who just made one empty map with dick all to do in it and tried to pass it off as an actual game by filling it with stock busy work mechanics that amount to nothing, claiming exploration, and giving it one stock meaningless objective that does absolutely nothing and are now desperately patching in whatever random game mechanics they can think of in the hopes that eventually something will stick and the game will be worth a shit! No Man's Sky is GARBAGE! No Man's Sky isn't a video game! It's one big-ass empty map with nothing to do! It's got no fun or interesting gameplay. What little gameplay is present is the most stock, boring, uninteresting, done-to-death bullshit imaginable, and even the one objective the game threw in to pretend that it should be sold in stores for 60 bucks doesn't do a single damn thing when it's completed. It apparently expects you to just be so damn impressed with the planet generation technology that you spend eternity cataloging glorified wallpapers because there's jack else to do in this thing. No Man's Sky isn't a bad game because it was overhyped or because Sean Murray couldn't keep his mouth shut. It's bad because it's barely a video game. The hype and the missing features just made it infamous. And while I can respect Hello Games for issuing major updates to add new features to the game, there's no foundation to build a real game here. You walk around, you pick up rocks, that's it. Adding a trophy for wasting enough time to buy a freighter doesn't fix that. And the fact that Hello Games torpedoed the entire point of the game, exploring a vast universe for a cheap get out of criticism free card, is all the more damning for how clueless and out of their depth Hello Games truly is. And that's not even the end of it. As I record this script, it's been announced that Hello Games is preparing for a new major update to No Man's Sky, Update 1.5, which they're calling Next, and the game is also getting ready to launch on the Xbox One for the first time. This all after the Story Mode update was also billed as a relaunch of the game. How badly do you have to misread a room to think that one of the biggest laughing stocks in the industry is primed for a new port? At this point, I just feel sorry for these delusional bastards. They really think that if they just keep relaunching the game over and over, that eventually one will take, and No Man's Sky will suddenly be the success that it was once poised to be. And it's never going to work. You only ever get one first impression, and Hello Games blew it on a game that was nowhere near ready for launch and hasn't gotten better since. And the longer Hello Games desperately kicks at that dead-ass hype train, the more depressing this whole fiasco becomes. Your game sucks! It will always suck! It's time to move on! I can see No Man's Sky having a niche appeal as a laid-back time sync game, and if you enjoy it, more power to you. But for me, I am so thankful to finally have this review done and to never have to look at this pile of ass again. In case you were wondering, this is not the library game that I teased in my Superman Shadow of Apocalypse review. That game actually arrived at the library as I was editing together this video, and after wasting a month trying to figure out how to describe a game that has basically no gameplay, there's no way that what comes next could be any worse.